so uh, we're here at Raja Academy of Martial Arts with Kung Fu Harun Raja. He's the uh, guy that beats me up on a regular basis. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is, um, or actually what Crew is going to talk about today is um, it's just some basic plumbing. You know, Thai, Thai boxing is famous for uh, its clinch work, and you know, not a lot of guys uh, practice solid clinch work. So uh, I want to get you guys started off on a good, uh, uh, basic footing. And uh, you know, Kung Fu, he is, he's, he's the guy to talk to. So I'm going to turn it over to him. I'm going to let him demonstrate some of our basic plumbing drills. So he's handy. Uh, main thing about uh, plumbing, you have to understand it's a little bit different than the tie stand. So if I were to go over the Muay Thai stance, you would have panned down to my feet. This is the Muay Thai stance that we're talking about striking. If you're talking about clinching, let's say that I am going to be the person on the dominant, I want to be able to make sure that both of my feet are parallel and that I'm on the tippy toe. This is so I have enough balance and I'm pulling the person in to restrict them from coming from any kind of straight knee. So what happens is if I'm doing this to Josh, I'm going to take one hand on the crown of his neck, elbow on the collarbone, the other hand on the crown of his neck, elbow on the collarbone, and I want to put my body weight onto him, okay? And the whole idea behind the clinch is this person is trying their best to get out of the position. Now, if Josh has me in the same position, then the position I want to be in is duck feet, where both of my feet are like this. What happens is most people get caught up doing this, and now Josh is moving them left and right, and now I'm getting caught up getting off balance. So what I want to do is when Josh turns to left or right, I have more balance with it. The second thing is, is you don't want this posture. So when he has it here, I want to bring my body up a little bit, and I'm also going to try to keep my head up. Don't get claustrophobic. Just try to pull them in somehow. You have both hands around the waist. You have both hands around the neck. You can have one hand around the neck and one on the arm, or vice versa. This is the basic one here. From this position, what we're working now is how I, the person on the bottom, can get back to the person who is he on dominant. So what's going to happen, number one, I call comb your hair. So what happens is, well, this person is clinching and I have a little bit of space. I'm going to take one hand, come on the inside and grab. Take the other hand, come on the inside and grab, and you'll see that my body starts to go back to here, which Josh does the same thing. I do the same thing. Josh does the same thing. Okay, so that's very easy. We call that coming. I call it coming in, okay? All right, so the next one's gonna happen is that if they're not giving you the respective space you need to come in. So what's gonna happen now, I call this one hand in, one hand out, or under over. So from here, you got me to clinch, I can't see the coat in. I'm gonna take one hand around the neck. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna take one hand around the neck, I'm gonna take the other hand underneath, and you see my elbows underneath, my hand though, is over here. And all I'm gonna do when I do that is as I pull, I pop this up. I go back to grabbing his head, I go back to grabbing his head. And he does the same thing. Exactly. One thing helps out is this pull the neck. And when I go to here and I pop this elbow up, this helps out a lot. And when you can score the knee, this hand just overlaps, this hand does the same thing. And you're there. So we call that one hand under, one hand over. One hand is on the bicep, the elbow is popping it up, and I'm kind of making a left turn and coming this way, okay? And then the other one is vice versa, one hand over, one hand under, okay? So same thing you guys did, the clinch. This. this one's not working so good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go here and go over at the same time. So what I'm going to do is instead of going under, I go over his bicep. But what I do is I pull his neck towards me and use my forearm bone to ram it into his bicep, causing me for a lot of position to release, and I can go back like this. So what happens is Josh still maintains one hand around my neck. One hand is going to go over the bicep. Or, yeah, and then he rams it in. Got it, exactly. So again, I'm going to go over the bicep, and I'm just going to drive this in. And turn them at the same time, OK? That's position number three. Final position number four is none of them are It's just not your day. This guy's got Thor arms. He's blocking you. He's locking you up really badly. So he has a super tight clip. This is one of my favorites. 
I don't like this position anyway, don't get fucked up over me. I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to put it like this, where the fingers are pointing down on the side of his elbow. And I'm going to take his hand and I'm going to take it right here around him and scoop him. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress him like this. So when I do this, I squeeze like that. I compress him like this, I take one hand here around the neck and I take one hand around the neck. So this is again. This is again where I'm holding on to Josh. He's going to squish my head with my arm. See what happens? Exactly. And you're tweaking the arm. So what's happening is I have one hand here and I have one hand here, and I'm squeezing him and I'm compressing him and I'm tweaking him. And the whole idea behind clinch people is to remember it's a game that you're playing. It's good sensitivity training for your grappler, trying to make the transition to striking, and it's good strong standing grappling. Main thing to remember, and it can be used as a self-defense. The idea, though, is if you're using it as a sport, try to slow the game. Okay? And you know, a lot of times what we do in the gym, uh, and it's probably one of my favorite drills, is where all we'll do is we'll just do um, uh, plumb sparring. Where all we'll do is we'll just go through those four drills, maybe throw a couple knees every now and then. And, uh, I mean, that's a really good way to drill this technique. So if you got a partner at home, uh, you know, I, I really should just try trying this one out. Uh, one thing important is you want to preserve your partner so that they can come back the next day and be your partner. So the knee that I want to do is called curve knee. I'm going to hit with the instep of my leg. Now in reality, yes, you're here with the phone. If you're fighting for here, we're going to go right to each other so we can enjoy a good training session. So when we over here, all right, we're going to go and pair him. Now when we're paired up here, uh, he's going to have his position. Okay, he has dominant. I respect it. He gives me one curve knee and he gives me another. All right, all I'm going to do is I'm going to close one hand in and now respectively he's going to give me my chance to do it. I'm going to open the door and close the door. Open the door and close the door. You know, freestyle it. Like Cruz said, you know, you're not trying to go hard and heavy. You're not trying to kill your partner. It's, it's, a, it's a skill development drill. Uh, and Cruz, you're you guys, if you like this video, uh, please remember to hit the like button. You know, we're, we're going to be making a lot of these videos come uh, moving forward, so please remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, so thank you guys. Bye -bye.